Hey everyone, it's October 20th, and that means that if today's your birthday, you share it with American politician, soldier, and murderer Daniel Sickles, who killed a U.S. attorney, making him the first congressperson to literally get away with murder. And that is him right over there. Sickles was born into wealth in New York City in 1819, which is a fun year to say. He often lied about his age and claimed to be younger, which some attribute to his efforts to woo women less than half his age later in life. After attending the school, which is now known as New York University, he became a lawyer, becoming admitted to the bar in 1843, and quickly turned to politics, being elected to the state assembly in 1847. He got married in 1852 to a 15-year-old girl, and the following year was sent abroad by President Franklin Pierce to serve as a diplomat in London. Pierce was one of a string of remarkably bad presidents we had in the 1800s that set the stage for the Civil War, so even though we're 54 years into our current string of terrible presidents, we've actually had it worse. Sickles returned to the U.S. and was elected to the New York State Senate in 1855, and the next year became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, serving two terms in office. During his political career, he was censured in New York for escorting a known prostitute into the state assembly chambers because only members of the body were allowed to prostitute themselves in that building. In 1859, Sickles discovered that his wife was having an affair with Philip Barton Key, who was the son of the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, Francis Scott Key, and was serving as U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia. When he saw the man in Lafayette Square, a park across the street from the White House, he pulled out a gun and shot him in the chest, killing him. Sickles then walked to the Attorney General's house a few blocks away and surrendered, confessing to the murder he had just committed. Taken away to jail, he was allowed to keep his weapon with him and met with numerous members of Congress and even received a letter from President Buchanan, who he had worked with in England a few years prior. Charged with murder, he pleaded not guilty due to temporary insanity, the first use of such a defense in the United States. Newspapers took his side and portrayed the victim as a womanizer who was terrorizing the fairer sex all over Washington. He claimed that his wife having an affair drove him mad and he was legally insane when he committed the act of killing her lover. Sickles was acquitted and retired from public office, but had been granted the rank of major in the New York militia and upon the outbreak of the Civil War began recruiting new members for the group. Despite a lack of combat experience, he ended up leading a regiment into battle after a lengthy congressional review of his commission. He did well in the first few battles he was present for and was promoted by President Lincoln to Major General, though his decision-making at Gettysburg was considered disastrous and basically ended his career. Modern historians dis disagree about whether it secretly stymied Robert E. Lee or not, but I'm not Ken Burns, so I'm not qualified to even have an opinion on the matter. He lost his leg during the battle and was awarded a Medal of Honor 34 years later and worked as a diplomat for much of the rest of his life. Sickles became known as a ladies' man during this time, however, so perhaps his principled stance against infidelity should be called into question. He died in New York City in 1914 at the age of 94. If this is your birthday, I hope you have a great day. Leave me a comment so I can wish you a happy birthday. If you know someone whose birthday it is today, send them this video so they can find out all about their birthday twin. And to Daniel Sickles, I say, happy birthday, you bastard. It's a rooster costume for a dog.